Hello there. Put your motherfucking hands up, baby. Let's go. What a dub this morning. I do not care if it was on penalties. I'm going to be the most shameless person ever. Listen, I, no, I can't be the most shameless person because it's only to the last day. You got to stay humble. You got to stay quiet. You can't get over the. You can't get over. You can't get over excited because you haven't won it yet. We've never won it. There's no right to talk at the moment. But I know what Arsenal fans are like, especially in the UK. Um, some of them can get annoying and it pisses me off sometimes, even as an Arsenal fan, even as a diehard fan. They get carried away too much. We're just going to... Composure. Anyway, what's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old Lauren Film student here from Sydney, Australia, absolutely shooting his shot. And today, we are up to episode 8 of The Soprano Season 5. This one is titled Marco Polo. We're going to get into the reaction. And as always, we're just going to have some fun with this thing. Let's absolutely smash it. Let's go. Follow me, Jerry. This little bitch is for you. It's a Whirlpool duet. Top of the line. Same as mine. Nicole is head over heels, man. It's above and beyond, Carmine. I'll thank my father too, may rest in peace. <laughs> this is for Freeport. It's a token. You know, it's my understanding, Carmine, that Johnny's still sore about that. That's why I appreciate your support. I'm moved up here now. You and me are gonna do great things together. Amen. Daddy, Daddy, the boat is sinking. Carmine, my God! Hey, that's Bruce the Shark from Jaws, man. Hey, stay away from it. Steer away from the boat. I just sailed her from Miami three weeks ago. She was fine. Who did that? You should call a coast guard, can't I? <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Say what you want about little Carmine. He might have the best house in the show thus far. On the water like that, great paintings, great view. Oh! Yeah, Carmela, Grandpa just... Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, take it easy. Maybe we should cancel the party. Well, maybe he'll be fine by his birthday. You know, he's turning 75, Ma. That's a milestone. Oof. He's got some bruises. Very lucky man. Those hedges broke his fall. But a few days of rest and he should be fine. The neurologist is giving him a final look, and then he can take him home. Okay. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank God. Oh. His roofing days are over. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yes, huh? What do you think about inviting Tony? Well, that's a thing. I don't know if I should or not. Everybody would understand if you didn't. You're separated. I know, I know. But just the idea of having a family party in the backyard without Tony there, mm -hmm. manning the grill, playing host... It wouldn't be the same. She's going to be okay, baby. Why don't they take care of this man? Yeah, why don't they take him to emergency services? The man is... I think it's a very wise decision. What decision? I haven't made one. I thought I heard you say that you had, that he wasn't coming. Top that 176 miles per hour. Standing quarter, 13 and change. How many horses? 390. Well, let's set you back about uh, 99 and change. You're spending like you're already on the throne. <laughs> Good year. Oh, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> While we're doing car talk here, Phil, I don't know me. He won't let that thing go. He owed me money and he was ducking me. Look, I'm not saying you're wrong. Phil treats nickels like manhole covers. Believe me, I know. But the captain's loyal to me need to know I stand behind him right now. Fucking little Carmine. This asshole's giving away washing machines. You, <laughs> you don't have collision insurance, fucking Phil? His son-in-law's a broker. They let it lapse, looking for a better rate. <laughs> fucking idiot. Tony, I ruled in your favor. The racetrack, the money Philly owed you. Well, if I'm paying for it, we do it at Pussies, and we don't do it at all. His wife's running a body shop now. I can at least control expenses. <laughs> hey, just stay on good terms with Johnny yeah, Sack and you'll right. be fine, I reckon. Fucking don't, thing's so powerful. I had to take a lesson from the dealer last night. Don't get involved in the turf war that's happening. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's that complimentary lawn mowing at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, don't get involved in the turf war. Steer away from it. Let New York kill each other. Pretty low. How's Jenny like the car? She loves it. 
but she hasn't driven with me yet. With her knee, she has a little trouble getting into the seat. Don't make a joke. Don't make a joke, please. He wanted to make a joke. Oh. <laughs> that Maserati on fire. Listen, a friend of mine banked up his car pretty good, so I was thinking, you know, maybe help us both out and uh, go a little business your way. You didn't need to come down. You just got to follow me. The thing is, I got to pay for the repairs. Long story. I distracted him while he was driving. <laughs> anyway, the point being that uh, anything you can do to keep costs in line could be a big help to me. Well, you look like you're doing pretty good since we had that phone call where, you know, you asked me, could you take over Bush's body shop? Thank you for that, Tony. You didn't have to say yes with all... Yeah, the kind of business you do through here. Uh, anyway, his name is Phil, and uh, Carmela sends hello. <laughs> Please say hello. Uh, we'll see. Boy, Ange. Hey, the very same stairs we saw, a very similar shot we saw Livia go down, you know, when the um the, the machinery was sort of installed and her coming down on that chair, like the electronic chair, like the electronic railing. Um, Very similar shot right there with Tony. <laughs> Finally, I left a message I was going to come by. Well, I got in late. <clears throat> Girl called in sick. You should get a new one. Have a seat. The house is a mess. This is what happens when boys take care of a Can house like that. Anything? Man, come on. You'll be fine for the party, thank God. Well, that's good. Oh. What party? <laughs> birthday? The surprise party we talked about last summer? Oh, yeah, that's coming up? Yeah, next Saturday. Oh. But actually, that's why I wanted to come by. I think maybe it would be best, be easier, anyway, for both of us, if, uh, if I went at it alone and not have you there. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, my, my father would love to have you there. You know, he's crazy about your sausages and all the rest of it, but... I thought, uh, you know, why put us in, and people in an uncomfortable situation? Well, I decided right away when we broke up I wasn't coming. Really? Well, I'm so glad you understand. It was hard for me to come to this decision, let alone tell you. Well, I'd, I'd like to contribute anyway. Oh, Mom and I are taking care of you. Are you 75? I insist. You know, I would rather see you go back to your therapist. I'd like to see you go to a therapist. And I'm not the only one. Oh, really? Hmm. Well, you can tell them all that I can't afford it. Well, it's not really your business anymore, whether I go or what. The switch up, the switch up. Hey, I have a feeling Tony gonna go to that party, man. No one, Tony, you're gonna put on a show somehow. Make himself the center of attention. <laughs> No, but we go way back to when Moses wore short pants. <laughs> I better call you. Tell him not to expect me. Surprise party, Joe. What are we, children? Anyway, at our age, it's enough surprise. We're still alive every morning. <laughs> Thank God for the day. West <laughs> Orange. DeAngelis. Hugo. It's over anyhow. It's over anyhow. <laughs> Life's over. Yeah. For Uncle Jude. Hugo, who is that? Who is this? Corrado, soprano. Oh, Corrado. How are you? How am I? I'm a prisoner in my own home, you is how I am. What do we live for? <laughs> yeah. He's come to terms with life. Fortuna. And also send you my regrets. I'd love to be at your jubilee. Junior. Jubilee? But the federal government says I can't leave the house 
and my family keeps me sedated. He just spoiled the surprise party. Surprise party, but I he just. Him, I go, At our age, it's enough surprise every day when we get up in the morning. Right? <laughs> uh, I suppose so. <laughs> so happy birthday, my friend, and many more. Arrivederci. Is that Uncle June's like sort of dig at Carmela there? Because they're not on good terms. Like, you know, I'll spoil the surprise party. And like, we saw you last episode with the funerals. Uncle June was jumping at the opportunity to go to every funeral possible and, you know, to get out of the house. And yeah, obviously this one is like, nah, stuff it. I'm not, not going to make the excuse to go. I'm not going to get, you know, leeway. I'm not going to get my five hours. Evander Hollywood was Lennox Lewis. I saw the advertisement there at the bottom of the Or what? I think I could be of a lot more service to you in other areas. And getting straight now wouldn't hurt neither. Just eat what's on your plate right now. <laughs> Christ, what's what you been a month? I'm a team player, cousin. Charlie Hustle. That's what you want. I'll do it. Well, <clears throat> if you need some money, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Let's go get a drink. What should I get you the Angelus for his birthday? I was thinking cigars, but then I figured you were probably gonna bring some. Well, actually, I decided not to go. I had the situation. I went. I saw calm. I told her I thought it'd be best if I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I went and saw calm. You know, I thought it best. I said that, you know. Oh, Philly. 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 Hi, Phil. Joe. Where's your brother in law, doll? What the fuck is this? It was a front end collision, Phil. This new paint isn't as brilliant. It's factory paint, same as original. It is different, it's duller. Maybe it's the lighting. Something's off with the seat. What is it, Phil? Feels off kilter. Try it, Joey. Oh, just be grateful you got your car back in one piece and that wasn't ridden off. With that type of collision. You're right, it's off its axis. It reclines strange, too. Try it. Nobody said anything about the seats. This is unacceptable. Come on, Joey. Give me a call when you get the job done. Okay? All right, a couple of days, Phil. Phil, we did what was asked of us. Call me when it's done right. So, we'll come here first for the presents, and then we'll go over there. Sure, sure. <laughs> sure, <That's> sure. <laughs> Somebody tell you something. I know all about it. You can save the cloak and dagger. AJ. Oh, what? Junior Soprano told me all about it. That miserable fucking man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't know the cat. Relax. I'm fine <laughs> with no one. In my age, it's surprise enough to be able to get out of bed every morning. Hey, he's you know, coming to this shit. Sort of what Junior God said. Damn him. <laughs> all of us, your brother Lester, Dr. Fagoli. Rush Fagoli? He's in town? He retired from the foreign service. Well, they were living out in Marin County. Uh... Hey, I just want to say, whenever there's like a funeral on this show, there tends to be some kind of drama at the funeral or something going on at the funeral that's exciting. They're hyping up Hugh's 75th birthday here. And I'm just excited because because they're hyping it up. I just feel like something's going to go down at the birthday. Like something exciting is going to happen. Um, they've already, you know, there's a little bit of tension there already with, uh, you know, uh, Uncle June landing a little jab on Carmella right there, you know, spoiling the birthday party a little bit. But I wouldn't be surprised if something okay, goes down. They settled on Jersey. Octavia, the oldest, lives here. You know, Madonna, thank God it's not a funeral, Who's okay? Dr. Fago? Fagoli. Fag. Is she of the five-page Christmas card? And on Flag Day, Papa Russ shook hands with Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> what an honor. BFD. The Fagoli kids finished college. That's what sticks in your craw. What sticks in my craw is that when he got that medal, you two weren't even invited to the ceremony. This is such a nitpick, but I feel like in different cuts like right here, in different like camera angles, Carmela's no, Coke is a different level on the cup. 
<laughs> Dr. Fagoli served in the State Department. In Rome, he was career assistant to the ambassador to the Vatican. He got a medal from the Pope himself. Wow. But when we were kids together in the Navy, he had such a bad case of the crabs, we used to call him the governor of Maryland. <laughs> hey, you, stop acting like a child. Oh, lighten up. He's old enough to hear. She's uh, right. Knock it off. Hey. Who else? Hey, you and AJ tell jokes, Freddy man. Freddie DeNovi. Tony will love him. Dad, Tony isn't coming to the party. Why won't he come? Well, I felt that uh, since we're separated, we should get used to the idea of living separate lives. Oh, that's a crock of shit. You don't talk to her like that. This is very difficult I've for known her. the man for 20-something years. It's his house. How's it going to look? I talked to Tony about it. He's in agreement with me. Because you put the screws to him. Fine, I'll cancel the party. Yeah, go right the head ahead, because I'm not coming if the man of the house isn't there. Ooh! The man of the house? Hey, you might be the police warden, Carmella, but the man yeah. of the house needs to Hi, be there. It's Angie. We did all the repairs you said on Phil's car. He came today, and now we found a dent in the rear. His seat, there's a problem with that. His seat? I didn't want to get into these extras without checking with you. And Tony, you want to run a body shop, run a body shop. You said, because you claim your piece in a garage. So you want to be a woman in business and do what you think the situation calls for. I just want to put my kids through college. That's a good thing, Ange. You know, some woman left alone like that would have given up. Tony, before I outlay for these costs, yeah, I need to know. Edge, I'm not there. What do I know? It's your call. Why are you putting, why are you putting Edge to so much trouble, man? Why? My way to Welsh Farms. Get a triple blueberry Sunday. Good for you. Enjoy. Hot summer night. <laughs> Go for it. Deserve it. Bye. Right. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. I feel like Tony's feeling a little bit lonely at the moment. What's company, man? <laughs> oh, Chris. Fine, Chris. Yo, Tony coming to that party, whether he like it or whether she like it or not now. How you handled yourself with him in Pennsylvania. That's why I wanted to meet you. We were like freaking fracking the camp. Angelo's my buddy. He knew all the Jackie Gleason stuff by heart. He acted all the parts himself. Do a little bit for Rusty. The mumbo thing. <laughs> Oh, Carlos was teaching you the mambo. That's a different story. Get out. Get out. He's, he's not amused, that guy. He ain't amused. He ain't amused. So how's your re-entry been? You doing okay? Yeah. Tony's been good with me. I always liked your cousin. He's a real gentleman. Angelo's looking out for you, too. I told Rusty that you might need a little learn. Well, yeah, I could use a little cash injection. Maybe a push up the pyramid. You know, time served. We need something done. Nice little payday for you. And an opportunity for you to hone that rep you left behind. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And this involves... Uh-oh. Somebody needs... Yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Adios, amigos. Arrivederci to someone. New York guy, not Jersey. Who's he with? Friend of a friend. Not a friend of ours. Friend of Johnny's. Is this Phil? You guys gotta settle that shit. It's not the boat. It's not the boat. It's Lorraine Caluso. Rainy Caluso. Little Carmine went to school with her. They go back that far. Kill a woman? Come on. See, Tony's not involved in this turf war yet, but. Getting cousin Tony involved in this stuff for on right now. inadvertently gets I'll Tony involved. The benefit of the doubt. You don't want us. Thank you. This problem over here anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you think about it for a bit? I should be a mob boss, know. man. I don't think so. <laughs> but thanks, guys. Hey, that's the mature we response right there. The other day, and the consensus seems to want your presence at my father's party. Well, that's nice, but it's kind of short notice now. <laughs> it's for my father, not me. I like you, man. I love you. My plans go fishing with Sil. Well, he really wants you there. If you could find a way to make it, I know he would be very happy. Uh, he's very fond of you. The New York sausage, hickory wood, whatever. You're not using Artie? I got him doing appetizers and salads, but he's really there as a guest. I am cooking. <sighs> Tomorrow's going to be a madhouse. Just living hell. I don't know. Uh, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I appreciate it. 
<laughs> you can't give a straight up ex answer and say you're excited to come. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> hey, Kong. Hey. I know you're short handed. Uh, I thought you might need some help around here today. It's my weekend with the boys. Don't stay out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love his boys, man. Are they twins? <laughs> Just, just give him, just give him hey, the Game Boy Advance, and they're good. Guys enjoy her pool. You want to destroy her property? It's a beach chair. It can get wet. Don't get smart. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, Eddie Falco worked out for this season. She toned up. What are you here? Five years now? I asked you to get up at eleven. We got a lot to do today. Well, you were supposed to send us to Mr. Wegler for summer school. Put it down. <laughs> Greetings, birthday people. And you are here, which is great. You can help with the setup. Uh, Hi, uh, uh, Finn, this is our Uncle Tony. Tony, this is Meadow's friend, Finn. Hey. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making Grandpa's favorite maple walnut icebox cake. No, we have cake. Jeremy, just let her take a swim. I know you're hot. Do you have a towel? I'll bring you a coffee too. <laughs> I'll be outside. <laughs> the way hey, Tony Tim? B was staring Hello, down I have Finn. I a lot to do today. Hello, I'm making dessert to help. Seems like a nice guy. Yep. Yo, Carmelo is right. This is going to be a madhouse. I, I don't like the way he's staring down Car uh, freaking Meadow as well. Any luck with Kelly? No. I've been scouring the internet for any trace. Here is your cake pan. And you're going to clean up your baking mess. How can women still get here? Straight A's. Oh my god, what is the matter with them? Chaos everywhere. Chaos everywhere. Non stop. Don't let that by yourself. You wait for some help. What are you doing here? You always do this. The party is not for hours. He needs help. I'm not going here. I'm returning your porter back. You said you needed it. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Uh, Later for that. Get your uncle out here. <laughs> he left. He said he told you he had to vote for a minute. He asked us to watch the twins. <laughs> he said, I, I'm going to head out. Yeah, help me with this. Oh, my goodness. What a bother. Excuse us for living. Oh, yeah, the other Tony's cousin, right? <laughs> it requires perfect. We try it. Well, fuck that. I don't feel like I'm sitting at 12 o'clock. Oh, my yeah, gosh. 12 o'clock. May I? I don't give a fuck. You can sit in there till fucking San Gennaro. It'll still need to be dealt with. This car went through a major collision. They replace the tracks under the seat. Maybe throw in a CD player in the dash. We already did that. We replaced the tracks. He's got a CD player. Jesus God, Duke, they're hosing us for a $2,000 factory seat. Come on, Joey. Tony, nice to meet you. Come on, you coming? Yo, try to keep him cooled down. Yo, Phil, Phil gonna be, Phil gonna be feature levels of annoying. Watch. Yo, who airballed that? Oh, yo, 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 not at the birthday like this, man. All right, so we will deal with it. Jesus. Don't you have any hors d'oeuvres without tomatoes? Why is Carmela's mother in panic direction. mode here? Rosalie just the entire episode, she's been in panic mode. You know, I get the stress of these family occasions. I've seen my aunties, the wives, the these meal. such in a panic state sympathies. trying to prepare everything. Well, it wasn't always like this. Napoleons and see Julian feel that way. Well, you really have to go to Italy to know, and so many of them don't. I ate like a champ all the way up and down the booth the whole two weeks. <laughs> Those recipes that you used to send me from Tuscan Lina, my God, they were a revelation. Bulito misto, asabuco. Mm. A lovely Carmela Soprano. Would you like to say a few words? Back, thank God. You get the guests writing. <laughs> Who the hell is Tony? Hey, let's Have vlog it. I'm coming down low. Let's vlog it. You let's vlog the, the experience. And the sausage. He's always got to wait till the last minute. I heard that. <laughs> uh, finally. Hi, Tony. Got no faith in me. I wonder why. Pins and needles, needles and pins. It's almost as if they're not separated. Bumbo. It just feels that way. The birthday boy's favorite. Where is he? He's out back. Oh, good. 
The man of the house, baby. The entertainer. I love how Carmela's mum turned her back in disgust when Tony walked in. Tony, I want you to meet a couple of my oldest friends. Dr. Russ and Lena Fagoli. Nice to meet you, sir. My son-in-law? Well, whatever. Tony Soprano. Hey. A doctor in the house, huh? That's good, because somebody usually goes down at these things. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> my doctorate is in international affairs. Oh. From Princeton. G.I. Bill. So you're a doctor like uh, Kissinger's a doctor? Yes. Huh. Russ had an audience with four popes. Oh. What section did y'all sit in? Oh, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> did they make sure you shoot the food tables before they're pillaged? Well, I'd uh, love to stay in chat, but I got a fire to start. Nice to meet you, Doc. Nice to meet you. Oh, man. Oh, I want a barbecue now. I want a barbecue. The chops, the cutlets, everything. I would like to make a toast to the man of the hour. I just want to say something quickly. There was a quote last episode which really resonated for me, and it was said from Fran. And she said, you know, if you're married to a powerful man, you damn well right better make him feel powerful. I think it was along the lines of that. And I just thought to myself, I want to ask you guys the comment section. What do you guys think of um, Carmela's marriage to Tony? Did she make him feel powerful or did she always bring him down? You can use multiple examples throughout the series or th throughout the series thus far. No, no, obviously spoilers um, going into the episodes that are after this. Um, but what do you guys think? Did she make him feel like a powerful man? Um, I'm just interested because I always said at the start of the show, and I think I've said it in a couple of reactions, you know, a powerful king always needs, you know, a powerful queen, an equal next to him. But I'm not sure if that's the case with Tony and Carmella. I don't know. I'm not too sure. Um, but what do you guys think? Like, did she make him feel powerful a lot of the time? Or was it just in spurts, in highlights here and there? Or not at all? I, I'm just asking you guys that. Because I feel like that's a quote right there that, oof, oof, that resonates throughout the entire show. A very special man. A man who I love more than words can possibly say. My father. Hear <laughs> him. You are the best father and grandfather in the world. Big up Hugh, man. Salute to you. Salute to you. You are the greatest, my little Melly. Oh, he, he might talk up Tony in this speech and people might not like it. Yeah. Thank you for having us at your home. At your home. There, my lovely bride. Still the prettiest girl in the world. Oh, Thank you for putting up with me all these years. <laughs> My guy Hugh. My guy Hugh. Look at Christopher in the background with the shades. Thank all you freeloaders for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you open up your gifts, Dad? Not now, Carmella. It's busy here. Uh, mercy. Well, good. People spent money on them. I'll break the ice. Yeah. That's a lot of gifts to open. You're gonna you're gonna have those. Pe you're gonna have those people just stand around for that long, opening the gifts. Let's see what Tony's gifts. Ooh. Damn. That's an instrument. Stratocaster. R really, Finn? Oh, oh, we packing. A Beretta. We packing. We packing a Beretta. I don't know what to say. Jubilee or 12 gauge, 28 inch barrel. Still rolling, my friend. Time to start drinking today. Probably right after you got up. Oh, cuz. Tony, can you bring the camera over and get a shot of this? Sure, I got nothing better to do. <laughs> hey, Tony B, what's with the sly comments? I know money's tight at the moment, but like. Like the freezer full of venison this year. Hey, Brian, you gotta watch, man. Just don't feel jealous. Let the man enjoy his birthday. Uh -huh. That is. 
I was about to say that's some poor cinematography, but the man knew what he was doing at the end there. <laughs> you know, I've been to the Beretta studio in Brasher. No kidding. I'd love to see that. You know, that company goes back to the 1500s. Not all. Sure, the best pieces. At all. They never export this. How we get it in the country, you know. Maybe Annalise, a little bit of help from her. <laughs> There's a slight dig I want right there. One and all here to know what a wild man Hugo was in his day. Remember what he did at the Bund meeting in Patterson, right? Threw that cherry bomb on those crowds. Yeah, tell that one. Give us a piece, Tony. Why don't you take a break? Oh, I'm all right there. Could use a beer, though. You got it. <laughs> like I said, almost feels like they're not... The way they're interacting sometimes, it's almost as if they're not separated. It's like they had that one big argument, and it was just that one big argument. Thanks. I don't know. I see no resentment here. Hello. Like, I feel like Tony can move back in here, and they could just like act civil like this. Hey, she misses the man at the house. How's that look? Done? You're the grill meister. <laughs> Who is not invited to this Pretty birthday party? Like, I still think we have the greatest legal system in the world. But it's cap. becoming more and more discriminatory. Cap. I mean, if you're a like, minority, or worse, an immigrant from an Arab country, civil rights don't apply at all. No place is the breach of civil rights more evident than the penal system. Rehabilitation, please. The nature of the system instills the convict mentality to the point where prison becomes the only venue where the convict can function. A little bleeding hot. She is wise beyond her years. She does <laughs> all the money I'm spending over at Liberal University in <laughs> That is little girl. Yeah. Remember you little girl what I used to call you? Yeah, uh, he thinking about Kelly. He thinking about Kelly. <laughs> he would love to have that with Kelly. Oh, you built this house. Your friend's maxing out the situation down there at Pussy's. Sure. He milking it. Back to receipt, bouquet. I tried. He trying to Get Tony to pay as much for the cost. Then again, the friend over there is taking me to the clinics with this divorce shit. I got a belt tight. Can we get some able-bodied semen over here? <laughs> no, let Tony be out of this. Let him have the conversation You're with Tony, man. Slave. Oh! I didn't have a drop. God damn it. Lester will drive. He's in the bathroom. So many people dropping. <laughs> so many people dropping. Hey, Virginia Mail. <laughs> hey, retired from his own 75th birthday party. He went out. He went out on a high. What can I say? Get my boy home safe. There's no shame in going out like that on your 75th birthday. Let him have a fun time. No, no, no. I want to hear. Oh, please, Connor. The off color jokes, the sausage twirling. Tony. These are cultured Italians. Who gives them? This is a success, a diplomat. This was a shock for them. And he's such a diplomat, he insults his host. You heard what he said to Tony. He's a pompous man. Yeah, get out of here, wants. man. Let's talk about Who's he think he is? This is Tony's house, and Tony's rules. A marital situation. All along, it was so that your cultured Italian friends, who were born and raised on Arthur Avenue, I might add, wouldn't meet your Gavone son-in-law. He made us all look like Gavones. Whatever we are, I am proud of it. Unlike you, obviously. Thank you, Carmella. Thank you. Been proud of my Stand family. up for Tony. Shit. I remember you telling Aunt Willis you were glad the Angelus didn't end in a vowel. I never said that. And when Meadow came out, oh my God, she's so dark. You're drunk. I'm going home. You know, there are Italians all around with their closet self-loathing. I just never wanted to believe my mother was one of them. And now what the fuck are you crying about? The secret is out. Marco. I, I, uh, Marco Polo. I just wanted to say, um, 
like I perfectly get what Carmelo was saying here because like my dad has sort of said similar things. Um, he talked about like so he goes, your future girlfriend. He goes. We're going to be the way we are around her. We're not going to change for her. My family is a very loud family. They're very loud. They're not afraid to speak out. They don't know the limits. They don't know the boundaries. They will say anything and everywhere. Like, for instance, I had my friends over um, uh, just after in January on Australia Day. And we had a mad time. We had a fantastic time. And it was the first time ever I had my friends bring over their girlfriends or the friends who had girlfriends bring them over. My dad did not give a crap. He was dissing anyone. He did not care and like that's just him that's how he is around the boys he wasn't gonna change because the girls were around he did not care so my family's always said that like we're not gonna change around your girlfriend she has to accept us for who we are i like what carmelo was saying that tony's not gonna change just because of the guests all right he's gonna stay true to who he is he's gonna be that individual you know he's the man of the house he's the grill master okay let him let him let him muck around crack jokes it's the best thing <laughs> Yo, why Artie gotta be the one doing the Marco Polo because he got a black eye a couple episodes ago. Time out, time out. He saw the way he looked at Carmella walking. <laughs> hey, that's one big happy family, man. Come on. You bastard! You're a cop. <laughs> I sense they're coming back together here. This is. I feel like this is the happiest I've seen the family throughout the entire series together. Listen, dreams, Hammers. Night, Dad. Good night, Grandma. Good night. Grandma's not a maid. I love oh, Tony B's kids, man. What's this? I don't know. Yes, you do. <laughs> Are you talking to you, Justin? Jason and Justin. Double J, baby. Ask JJ. Question, Jason. Pins? From the 96 Olympics in Atlanta, it looks like. That's when you were stationed in Saudi Arabia, right, Dad? Yes, that's right, but I'm talking to your brother. You took this tonight, didn't you? I bought it from AJ. You stole this from your cousin who opens his house to you? I found it on the floor way in back of AJ's closet. He doesn't care. With all the stuff he has, he got to go to the Olympics and everything. I love where he lives. I don't want to come back here. Yo, yo, yo! Oh man, the pressure's on Tony B here. I, I reckon this is. My son steals from his own family. You're gonna return it tomorrow and apologize. Where are your game boys? Yes. That's mine. Hustle him. <laughs> One gets punished, both gets punished. You gotta learn the hard way. Give <laughs> both of these to the Salvation Army. I didn't do nothing. You're just as bad as he is because you didn't stop him. Hey, discipline him. That's right. Discipline him. That's right. You gotta learn the hard way, kids. Okay, Don't want to drop you off Patrick. It's too late. Call me when you get to Patrick. Yeah, I'll try. He's in a bad cell area. Mm -mm, he's in a bad cell area. Mm. <laughs> Artie. <laughs> Just showing her he's not a kid. Mm, I think he's showing him more than that. Well, that's inevitable. That's scary is what that is. He'll be fine. Hey, you talk about it. You probably did it. You're at his age as well. You know what it's like at that age. Hey, he moving closer. He doggy, he doggy paddling his way to her. Look at him floating towards her. Hands off each other. It's almost as if they're reliving like being high school kids here. High school musical love here, baby. Troy Bolton. Tony, let's call it a night. Why? You tired? Yes. Come on. Marty is right over there. He's comatose. <laughs> and he's sparking it back up again. Does it feel nice? Let me see. 
Yo, Tony, where are your hands, man? Don't show me where the hands are. Oh, okay, that's all right. That's all right. I was like... <sighs> didn't a movie come out recently called Night Swim? And like, I saw the trailers that didn't end well for the girl that went down for the night swim in the pool. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck went down? <laughs> this is the most color we've had this season as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this has been a good episode. I liked it, man. Like, a bit vibey, a bit more chill. But at the same time, whenever you have a good moment in this show, there's always, you know, there's always sin and darkness lingering um, behind those good moments. There's always a shadow with the light. There's always something here that's brewing, um, like with those good moments. And I feel like it's Tony B here weighing up the decision about what he wants to do with his life. Make that big gorp, big call potentially to help, um, is it, um, to help little Carmine here. And that's going to, all the uh, shit's going to hit the fan beyond proportions. He wants to provide that life for his kids. He wants that, you know, he he he's done with the grind. He did enough time in the can, so. There we go. Here we go. He's answering the call. Even without talking to Tony, it's gonna to be massive. How can I help you? I'm in. Uh oh, spaghetti oh. Joey. It's bigger than last week's. Hey, Crystal. The room is empty. Come on, time is money. Thanks. Don't oh, be very happy. The, yeah. Send him and John my best, huh? They're gonna hit Joey. Good night, Heather. Good night, Lux. You're off? Yeah. I'm going downtown. Me too. Let's go. Go ahead, dog. See you next week, Joe. They're gonna send a message by killing Joey. Obviously, you can't kill a big boss like Phil, because that will send you know, shockwaves. You gotta send a message like this, like they did with, um, what's her name? Lorraine. Yeah, hurry up and do it, Tony B. Come on. Take him out. There we go. POV shot, baby. POV shot, beautiful. Hey, Tony, right? Hey, he remembered your name. Oh, and the girl, too. Can't have witnesses, I guess. Oh, poor Heather, man. Wrong place, wrong time. And he gets run over. Breaks all his toes. So sloppy. <laughs> Heather might survive this. You never know. I don't know if she's taken out completely. Come on, man. He even remembered your name. I feel like that's decent from Joey to remember Tony B's name. I was like, bro, fair play, fair play. Like, didn't disrespect you. He didn't do anything that bad. But it's just like, man, when you're in the game, you're in the game. He, I feel like Joey didn't even do anything. Obviously, take out Lorraine and stuff. But, like, that, that's your problems. Why is Tony B getting involved like that, man? Oh, I have to watch the next episode now because this mess is going to be monumental. This mess is going to be crazy. The turf walls that are going to break out right here. Oh, man. Especially with, like, how rumors are easily spread. Um, and words can get, you know, um, you know, the message that that's being sent through words to different people can get changed as it delivers. You get what I mean? <laughs> like, how's Tony going to clean up this mess? I mean, I mean, Soprano Tony, not Tony B. 
he's a soprano too but like the Tony soprano this is going to be a mess of monumental proportions like i said um and it's a clear message sent the best thing the best thing Tony B could have done is gone to Tony and told him what happened. Um, Tony B did sort of like a Chris situation there where he went out on his own accord, I guess. Did what he needed to do, but without thinking of the consequences, without talking to the boss directly about it. Man, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. i got to watch the next episode, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, been your body Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.